Hi everyone, my name is Ngozi Ajeleye, founder of Crunch Econometrics, and in this video, I'm going to cover instruments of variables. This is an introductory video. There will be separate videos to cover the estimations and separate videos to cover uh, the endogeneity test. So make sure you watch the entire series for you to be able to fully understand how to estimate an instrumental variables model. In this introductory video, I'll briefly explain the concept of endogeneity, what an instrumental variable is, discuss the sources of endogeneity, um, explain the solution to addressing an endogeneity problem. I will also discuss the properties of a good instrument. I will explain what an identification problem is. I will also explain the differences between a reduced form and a structural model, then also show you the link or the relationship between two stately squares and standard errors. Now, what is endogeneity? Endogeneity is when the regressor is correlated with the error term. That's just the simplest definition. Where the regressor is correlated with the error term given by this equation. Remember, a key assumption for the consistency of OLS estimates is that the error term of the model must be unrelated to the independent variables. Remember the zero conditional mean of the error term. So once this is violated, then that model suffers from endogeneity. Again, endogeneity is when the explanatory variable is correlated with the error term. Again, once the OLS assumption is violated, that is, if endogeneity is in the model, then the OLS estimator is inconsistent. Therefore, it cannot give you uh, the usual causal interpretation. In other words, you are going to be having some biased results. Specifically, in that situation, the OLS estimate beta cannot be interpreted as estimating the marginal effects of an exogenous change of the k regressor, that is, which is this one, the independent variable, on the dependent variable y. In other words, once the model suffers from endogeneity, you cannot give it the usual uh, causal interpretation. And this is a fundamental problem because such marginal effects are important in driving economic policy. So now you can see why endogeneity should be treated once you can observe it in your model. Now, what is instrumental variables? So let me just use a simple model to explain that. Here I have a simple model with a dependent variable, n is y, and a single regressor, which is school in x, specified by equation one. So equation one assumes that schooling is uncorrelated with the error term in this example, okay? So that means the direct effect of schooling on n is, is true beta one, which will be the coefficient of schooling, all right? So here we are assuming there is no correlation between schooling and the error term. So schematically, this is the part of the diagram. So here we can see the error term, not correlated with schooling, but having a direct linkage with any the dependent variable. Then we can see clearly that the absence of the directional arrow from U to schooling means that there is no association between schooling and U. In this situation, the OLS estimate beta will be consistent. Okay, now in the event that we assume that the model is um, suffering from what we call omitted variable, that is a particular indicator of earnings ability is missing from the model. So that means ability is included in the error term, all right? And that is because we all know that high ability will induce correlation between schooling and the error term because high ability will on average be associated with high years of schooling. Also, low ability on average will also be associated with low years of schooling. So ability is a key determinant of earnings. But in the model that we specified in equation one, ability is missing from the model. So ability is in the error term. And we can see it depicted here. So ability is part of the error term, which shows there's going to be correlation between schooling and the error term, giving room for endogeneity. 
So the presence of the directional arrow from ability to schooling means that there is an association between schooling and the error term. Now, this is going to lead to an inconsistent OLS estimator beta. Now, beta is inconsistent because it combines the direct effect of schooling on earnings, which is beta, with the indirect effect that those with high schooling are likely to have high ability and also have IU, which is error term, and hence high, high earnings. So this implies that schooling is endogenous, arising from the fact that within the system, it also affects you. This inconsistency of schooling gives rise to what is referred to as endogeneity bias. Remember, ability is already part of the error term, which gives room for the endogeneity of schooling. Now, to treat this endogeneity, we have to bring in a new instrument or an instrument denoted by Z. And this gives us a new schema where we have Z directly influencing schooling and schooling influencing earnings. So changes in Z are associated with changes in X, but Z do not lead to a direct change in Y, except indirectly through X, as you can see, Z does not affect earnings directly, but it affects earnings through variable X, which is schooling. In subsequent slide, I'm going to explain the link between Z and U. Now, what are the sources of endogeneity? Here, I listed just two sources, omitted variables. Independent variables are not observed and they end up in the error term. For example, ability was not observed, so is in the error term. So that means the error term is correlated with the X variables. So that is omitted variable as the source of endogeneity. Another source of endogeneity is measurement error, which can cause correlation between the mismeasured variable and the error term, okay? So here I've given you two sources of endogeneity. Now, how do you solve the problem? I have three points here, or four. I have four points here. For the first one, you need to find the omitted unobserved variable. If you can get data on it, include it in the model and problem solved. The second solution that you can, that you can engage is find a proxy variable, you know, and put it in your model. Look for a proxy of ability and put it in the model. Another solution is you can deploy an instrumental variables technique by substituting the endogenous variable with an instrument, for instance, Z, the instrument Z, that has zero correlation with the error term. So let me take you back to the previous schema. So Z and U should not have any correlation. Correlation between Z and U must be zero, okay? So no correlation between Z and U for Z to be a good instrument. So always remember that. Then again, another point I listed here is that you can deploy a two-stage least squares instrumental variables approach by substituting the endogenous variable with the predicted value, okay, of that endogenous variable, okay, predicted value. And it must have zero correlation with the error term. In other words, it will only contain exogenous information. By the time we go to the estimates, you will understand these approaches better. So here I've given you four solutions that you can easily treat an endogeneity problem. Now let us look at properties of a good instrument. The first thing is that a good instrument must not be included in the original regression model, okay? So this is the original regression model, y as a function of x. So you can see here, z is not included. So the instrument must be excluded from the original regression model. Another property is that the instrument must be relevant. Instrument relevance is very, very key. The instrument must be strongly correlated with the endogenous regressor. So Z must be strongly correlated with X, as you can see from these equations, okay? And you need to estimate what we call a reduced form model. This is how you specify a reduced form model, where the endogenous regressor is regressed on the instrument and any other exogenous variables in the model, all right? So this is the specification. There must be correlation between the instruments and the endogenous regressor to make the instruments 
relevant. Then the last property is that the instrument must be exogenous. The instrument exogeneity property must hold. In other words, the instrument must not be correlated with the error term. Very, very key, very, very crucial. And you can see the specification here. Covariance between the instrument and the error term must be zero. All right. So if all these things are in place, then you need to deploy an IV regression that will solve the problem of endogeneity. So now I want to explain the identification problem. There are three different cases. In the first case, we have the just identified case where the number of instruments Z is exactly equal to the number of regressors X. The second case is the under identified case. In this situation, the number of instruments Z are less or lower than the number of regressors. And the last one is the over identified case where instruments will exceed the number of regressors. So we have three forms of identification problem. Now, explaining the differences between a reduced from model versus a structural model. In simple uh, explanation, the structural model is always the initial model that the researcher estimated. This is the model you want to estimate, okay? And this is the model that is used for policy making, all right? So this is the initial model to estimate, but in this example, X1, which is this, is endogenous, all right? What is the reduced form model? The reduced form model is when you regress the endogenous variable X1 on the instruments and any other um, exogenous variables in the model. Take a look at the structural model here. Our assumption is that X1 is the only endogenous independent variable while X2 and X3 are exogenous, okay? So in the reduced form model, this is the endogenous variable X1 being regressed on the instrument. This is the Z1 instrument. And you can see X2 and X3 are here. So this is how you can specify your reduced form model. I'm going to say it again. You regress the endogenous independent variable on the instrument and any other exogenous variables that is in the model. The reduced form model will always satisfy the instrument relevance properties, okay? So again, this is the first stage regression that treats the endogeneity of X1, okay? So X1 is regressed on the instruments, like I said, and on other exogenous variables. What do you do again? You extract the predicted value of X1 from this particular regression. And from the results of this regression, your results must satisfy instrument relevance. Looking at the structural model here, I can call this one the augmented um, structural model. Let me just put it here so I, I don't confuse you. So I'm going to call this the augmented structural model. Why do I call it augmented? It's similar to the initial structural model, but in this case, I have replaced the endogenous regressor with its predicted value. You can see here, X1 hat, all right? So this is the second stage regression that will treat endogeneity. Do not confuse the augmented structural model with the initial structural model. They are not the same. So for the augmented structural model, Y, the dependent variable, is regressed on the predicted value of X1. And the augmented structural model will satisfy instrument exogeneity. All right. So finally, I will just briefly explain or discuss the relationship between two state least squares and standard errors. Standard errors are very important in regression analysis. I'm sure you know that by now. Uh, it is also known as the standard error of the regression or standard error of the estimates. Conveniently, the standard error tells you how wrong the regression model is on average using the units of the response variable. Okay. The standard error also represents the average distance that the observed values fall from the regression line. I'm sure by now most of you know all those things. So this is just a recap. Smaller values of standard errors are preferred and better because it indicates that the observations are closer to the fitted line. In other words, it indicates that the sample that you have gathered mirrors 
the unknown population. Okay? And by now, uh, you should know that smaller standard errors will give you larger t statistics and that will yield significant coefficients. On the other hand, when the standard errors are large, it will yield smaller t statistics and you are going to have insignificant coefficients. For further readings, I have listed five textbooks here. Please make sure you go through them. Cameron and Trivedri, Woodridge, Stock and Watson, Gujarati Damoda, Verbe. And there are so many other books out there that will help you fully understand instruments and variables. I listed here, students are required to read extensively from these textbooks. I also have articles that I have written where I use instruments and variables. You can connect with me on ResearchGate so you can download these articles for you to support your work. Thank you so much for listening. So this is a wrap up of introduction to IV estimations. Stay with me. My subsequent videos with detailed analysis, results interpretation, interpretation, and how for you to conduct endogeneity test. Thank you so much. I'll see you in my next video.